Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Hockey Writers Fantasy Four Check po- Podcast. I am your host, Jacob Struzik. Uh, and I'm Jacob Billington. And uh, today, uh, we're going to be going through the fantasy impact of the recent 2023 draft class, as well as some of the trades and free agency signings that have occurred up to this point. Uh, so we have a, a real good amount to go through. First up on the docket, let's let's talk about the draft and the low-hanging fruit that is the first overall selection. Jay, how do you feel about Bedard? What do you think he's going to do fantasy-wise? How do you think he's going to end up draft-wise? Give me your take. What do you think? Yeah, well, I mean, it was the no-brainer first overall pick. Um, I don't think there's any contention. Um, and Chicago is already starting to kind of build some good players for him to play with, even though that was not part of their plan before winning the lottery. So he's going to be playing with most likely Taylor Hall and maybe um, maybe Reichel on his other wing. I don't know. Uh, but he's going to have some quality pieces to play with. Um, he'll be the top center in Chicago. And I think he's going to probably put up a 70-point season, maybe mid-60s. Uh, I think that's a pretty fair assessment. Um, I, I do not like overhyping prospects. Um, I think way too many people do it, but I do think that Bedard is the real deal. Um, I don't know if he'll ever reach McDavid levels, but he will certainly be among the top players in the NHL. Um, right now, there is only one person even close to McDavid, and that's just McDavid. Like, there's nobody even second place as far away, and that would probably be Leon Dreisaitl. Um Yeah, Dreisaitl's his far away second, but still second. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I do think that, like, in the in this upcoming year, I think um, if you're doing a keeper league, you're probably taking them in the first round. Um, but if it's just a, a one-year league, I would say even still, like, there's a good chance he can go in the first round, maybe early second, depending on um, how many people you have in your draft and whatnot. But I do think that it's possible that he's one of the highest picks. So you mentioned it for keeper league. So you think that he's worth more than say someone who might be available like a, like a John Tavares or like a Sagan, one of those like aging centers that has that, you know, consistency performance, you would go with the young kid over the consistent performer, right? In your first round, you wouldn't wait for like rounds three, four, five for that. I would like to wait to round three, four, and five, but he's not going to be there. Um, it's <laughs> And it was the same thing when McDavid came into the league. He was one of the first players taken. Um, and again, like I said, I don't think he's going to quite reach that level. I hope he proves me wrong. I would love to see him. He's like a perfect hybrid between uh, McDavid's talents and Matthew's, Mel- Matthew's talents. Um, with, like with that elite shot, he's going to get a lot of goals. Um, and I, I do think that like taking him over, like you said, John Tavares, I think that's, that's a no brainer. Um, I think that it's entirely possible that maybe not this upcoming season, but next year and better second year, he can outproduce John Tavares, like John Tavares is on the downswing. Um, and all those 32 plus year old centers, they're all on the downswing. So I do think that he goes higher than he's, I'll say he's a top six center that goes. Okay. Okay. So strictly numbers wise, you, you mentioned he's going to get high sixties in that 70 point range. What what are we looking at for goals? What are we looking at for some of his just give me the exact numbers you're thinking. Give me, give me a prediction here. 31 goals, 35 assists. 31. I was going to say 35. So we're, we're close on our, on our guesses. I don't yeah, think he can make drop 40 in his first year, but that would be really cool. Yeah, write that down. Place your bets. It's yeah. that's what's happening. Put it put it down in the comments. Get it, guess it. Whatever you guys want, we can bet against each other. <laughs> It'll be a good time. We can just duke it out. Uh, now that we've gone through that, any other names from the draft that really stand out to you? As yeah, they'll make the team this year. Yeah, they're going to have fantasy impact. Yes, somebody should take them, whether it be on a flyer or one of the mid rounders. Uh, I'm definitely going to say the other top three picks, Leo Carlson and Adam Fantilli. In the order, I didn't think they would be. Um, So kudos to Anaheim and Pat Verbeek for taking their guy and not just letting the the public opinion make the pick for him. Um, But I do think that Leo Carlson is going to have a great year in 
uh, in Anaheim. And I, I do think that Adam Fantilli, who has already signed his entry-level contract, is going to have a great year in Columbus as well. Um, I, I might look at Fantilli as having a better year. Um, it's not uh, it's not certain that either of them start the year in the NHL. I assume that they will be. Um, but I do think that there's a lot more opportunity for um, Adam Fantilli to come into Columbus this year and make an impact. They need that number one center. When you look at Anaheim, they already have Trevor Zegers and Mason McTavish. So it's not like they're relying on Leo Carlson to come in and just instantly be that top center that they're, they've been waiting for. Where in Columbus, that's exactly what they're waiting for with Adam Fantilli. So you think Columbus would just throw Fantilli right to the Wolves and be like, bam, you're one C. And then they just drop Johnson and probably, uh, who was it, Roslovic that was playing center at one point? Yeah, and I, I, it, it depends because somebody's going to have to play the wing because they also have Cole Sillinger, um, who did have a down year, so it's entirely possible that he starts in the AHL with the Cleveland Monsters. Uh, but I do think that come game one, there's a really good chance that it is line A, Fantilli, Gaudreau, starting the season for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Okay. I, I like the idea of uh, Fantelli at 1C because him with I, – I agree with you. Him with Goudreau is just it, – it fits the mold, just the kind of way that they will complement each other. So I think it's really going to really, really gonna work that way. As far as Carlson goes, you're absolutely right with the whole – you know, they don't need him to jump up to that 1C spot. They already have Zegers. They have McTavish. And McTavish plays wing too. So that kind of helps, you know, divvy that up just a little bit. Um, but again, similar to Bedard, let's let's talk numbers. What what do we think that they're going to hit? What should people really be expecting from a fantasy perspective, offensively, hit wise? What are we looking at? Just for this year, um, I'm going to say both of them have relatively similar numbers, even though Fantilli is likely going to be playing in a bigger role. Um, I'm going to yeah. say they're both around that 45 to 55 point range. Um, not not big hitters, uh, maybe Fantilli more than Carlson. He's got that bigger frame. Um, he's not a super physical guy, but he can be. Um, so I do think that they end up with similar numbers um, pretty well all around the board. Um, and again, it all comes down to the opportunity that they get. And if Fantilli is the one C almost the whole season, he's obviously going to have more points than if Leo Carlson is playing behind Zegris and McTavish and only getting third line minutes. And who knows who his wingers will be. Um, I don't think he's going to be playing with Kalorn right away, who just signed a big deal. Um, but I do think both of them, uh, I'll say Carlson around 45 and Fantilli around 55. Okay. I, I like both those numbers. I, I figured Fantilli would probably somebody, I, I agree around that 50 point range. I was going to guess about 48 points. I was going to say about 20 goals for him. Carlson maybe around the 15 to 17 goal mark. And then maybe about 40 points uh, would have been my guess for him on th these are like high end estimates in my opinion. So, yeah. so someone I would probably take later rounds, not necessarily last round, but also not necessarily one of my early rounds, whether it be for keepers yeah. or redraft, you kind of want to balance that, but it's someone that I would definitely take a flyer on. I I take Fantilli over Carlson, but still keeping on the draft idea real quick. Um, I had one player in mind that was picked not late, late, but a little bit later than I initially expected them to. And I think that they have a real shot to maybe crack the lineup and have a bit of a fantasy impact. Is there anybody in the late first round that kind of had that feel for you or not really? I'm trying to think of who you're thinking of. Um, I think Colby Barlow was a really good pick. Um, at 18 for the Jets. Um, doesn't look like that's who you were thinking of, though. Um, no, no, I was thinking more of a homer pick for me. <laughs> Zach Benson, 13th. I, I was going to go with Benson at 13. And my reasoning is not only just based off of the talent that he has and the, you know, the actual skill set that he possesses, but Sabres just had, you know, one of their uh, top six guys, top six young guys, and Jack Quinn, he's out for an extended period of time. So he's going to be probably back between November and December somewhere. So that I think that might open up a slot for Benson to jump in there if he really puts in the work and jumps in there. And I feel like if he gets a full-time spot, he would have a good fantasy impact. I'm not saying he will make the team, but I'm saying if. 
it, yeah. somebody that we might want to keep a little bit of a watch on. See, when I look at the Sabres, I just like how many young guys can you have in your lineup? Like I know you already said Jack Quinn. Every yeah. single one of them. Exactly. That's the way the Buffalo's doing things because they have, obviously you mentioned Jack Quinn, but they also have Peyton Krebs. They have, um, you could still kind of throw Casey Middlestad in there, but not as much. Um, JJ, Paterka, JJ Paterka, um, even Tage Thompson is still on the younger side. Like they don't really have that big vet that they need. Like I'll, I'll bring my team into this, the Ottawa Senators. Like they don't have Claude Giroux in there or anything like that. So I don't know. Do, you could say Skinner's that, up there. Skinner's 30. Right, right. Skinner. I, I forgot he had a, t- a good bounce back year last year. 82 points. That's a big year. Yeah. That's very high for him. Yeah. No, you you proved me wrong right there. So do you think Benson is immediately above uh, Matthew Savoy? Um, I think they're neck and neck, and I think that's really yeah. going to be a competition for the two of them to duke it out. I think it'll be fun for them considering they're teammates from, uh, yeah. from the Winnipeg Ice. So – yeah. Uh, it, it'll be a fun little Duke out competition during uh, training camp and during the preseason. So I'm just saying it's somebody that I personally would keep an eye on just in yeah. case, as far as fantasy goes. Is there a possibility at all that both of them make the team? Do you think? Might have to move out a couple of pieces or cycle out. They definitely need to cycle out or move uh, Victor Olofsson. And yeah. I don't think they're going to move on from Greenway right away. Um, but you know, he he's going to be given his shot. Jost just resigned, so he'll still be given his shot. But I still think he's the extra forward in this case. So yeah. th- th- there is there is a shot, but it's it's less likely that they both make it as opposed to one over the other type thing. Yeah, that's just me. All right. Uh, so we went over the draft. Let's go into some of the trades that went down prior to during and afterwards so far any ones that really make you go yeah got to get that guy right now i think somebody on the quieter side there hasn't been a ton of trades obviously like purely to ball kicked everything off um, but <laughs> one guy that kind of might be flying under the radar is anthony duclair he didn't have a great year this year in florida because he only played 40 games between the regular season and playoffs um, but last year he had 58 points on the Panthers who have a lot of forwards um, who can produce going to San Jose. He's going to be one of the guys. So he's going to be probably on a line with Couture and uh, Tomas Hurdle. He's going to have a really good opportunity. And when you look at the bad teams, you know, this through the 13 years of Sabres rebuilding, somebody has to score the goals. There's some people that are going to overperform every single year on those teams um, and this year it could very well be Anthony Duclair. And when I say overperform, I don't mean another 60 point year. I think that's who he is now. Um, but like he could have like a 75 point season with San Jose this year. And I would not be surprised. So I think he's somebody to keep an eye on, uh, as for those who have been traded. Yeah. You picked out the one that I really wanted to highlight, which was Duclair. Cause I was like, it, it is a bit of a sneaky trade because, yeah. Florida had all of that depth. They can really afford to move a player like him out and kind of cycle somebody else in. Um, yeah. And they definitely need to, you know, try and recoup some assets. But as far as San Jose is concerned, there's not really much up front besides Couture and Hurdle. Yeah. I mean, there's Barbashev who had a solid year, but yeah. not, they're not Barbashev, uh, Barabanov, sorry. Barabanov, yeah. Barabanov, sorry. Um, he had a good year, but it wasn't like, blow you out of the water type year but adding Duclair he's got the speed he's got the scoring he's got all the right packages to kind of complement that San Jose offense so yeah I think and even if um so there, there's the expectation that a couple young guys are going to make it so um mm-hmm. could Bystead or Eklund make their way into the lineup this year um could either of them get a top six role and end up playing with Duclair if they break up those top three um who knows uh Duclair Duclair has an asset off the ice that not many players have, um, I guess, relatively not a lot of players have. Uh, and that's that he came from being a journeyman to now he is, I saw it after top six forward. Mm-hmm. And so he's only 27 and this is his, I believe it's his seventh team that he's played NHL games on. And while he hasn't played it yet, he's expected to. Um, but at 27, this being his seventh team, that's insane. 
Yeah, it's it's some really good numbers. And I, I really liked I always liked him as a player and I was always saying, hey, grab him as a depth, grab him as a depth. And then as soon as he started really producing, I was like, it's actually really exciting to watch. I'm surprised more people aren't paying attention to him. Yeah. You mentioned before the Dubois trade. So there's a bunch of pieces that went back and forth. And obviously Dubois is going to be, you know, the big piece and you're going to want to pay attention to what he's doing in L.A. But what about the players that went the other way? You got Filardi and I follow as the big two roster spots. What do you think yeah. they do in Winnipeg? Do you think they have better years? Do you think they drop off? What do you think? It's really tough because none of them are um, full-time centers. I think Valerdi might get a shot at the center position, but he's kind of a half wing or half center. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Cause as of right now, um, based on last year, it's either going to be Adam Lowry or Vladislav Nemesnikov that plays behind Mark Shifley. Neither of those are near a second line center caliber player. So this is a good opportunity for Valerdi to become that. Um, and now I, I think Valerdi is an extremely valuable asset. Um, and I've seen, um, I have said, kind of joking that Velarde might end up being the better player than Dubois and that the Jets might have gotten the best player in the deal. Um, Half joking when I say that, but um, Velarde is a fantastic player and will probably reach close to the level of Dubois in a very different way. He'll have probably better production because a lot of people are kind of overlooking the fact that Dubois just had a career year with 63 points this year. That's not insane. That's, That's a good year from second line center, but it's not groundbreaking or anything. So I think Velarde can match that total, um, especially playing with Kyle Connor and Nikolai Ehlers. That's, mm-hmm. he, he's pretty set up there. Um, Alex Ayafalo is a fantastic middle six um, defensive forward. He, um, he's just a perfect option for the Jets, who part of their, I guess you could say, part of their culture right now is that they're not very good defensively, especially up front, because Wheeler, Shifley, Dubois, Kyle Connor, none of them are, like Kyle Connor shouldn't be on the penalty kill. He's not. No. He's got the speed and he's got the the offensive instincts that can he can turn the play and make some offense during it. But he's not a defensive forward. So Alex I follow will probably have a really good um, opportunity in in Winnipeg. And then R- Rasmus Kupari, who is the the third player that went over, great fourth line center. Uh, he'll be battling with David Gustafson for that position. Um, and I really think that he's going to be like he. 2017 first round pick. He definitely has some potential there. He, as of right now, he's a 20 point guy. I think he has a little bit more in, in him than that, but I guess time will tell. All right. Uh, before we dip into uh, the next topic, there's just one, there's two I want to kind of compare for you. Comparable players, you got Tyler Toffoli going to Jersey, and then you have Riley Smith going to the Penguins. If you had to pick between the two, who do you go with? Who do you think has the better season with the new team? Who do I go with? If if I'm building a team right now, I want Riley Smith. Okay. I do think Tyler Toffoli is going to have a better season, though. He's going to be, probably be playing on a better line. Um, he He's coming off a fantastic season with Calgary. Um, and, like, I love what the Devils have done. I think that they have one of the best top nines in the NHL right now, and they have good def- uh, good defense to go along with it. And I, ju- I just think Tyler Toffoli is in a fantastic position. Now, Riley Smith could end up playing with uh, Sidney Crosby and Jake Gensel uh, or Evgeny Malkin and Brian Rust, maybe, whoever else is on that line. Who knows? Um, Riley Smith is a great player, and it's not like it's a landslide, me picking Toffoli. I think it's a flip of the coin. I do think that both of them can have a great year. But for this year, I'm taking Toffoli. So if you had the pick, you'd go with Toffoli. I- I'm kind of with you on that one. But I'm also slightly biased because of how well Tafoli performed for me personally in my fantasy league this year. <laughs> it was an absolute steal. No matter how many times I offered him to other people, nobody wanted him. And I was like, fine, I'll keep him. I'll I'll keep riding this train until it, you know, fizzles out. But you know, it, it never did. So I'm I'm pretty happy with that selection ultimately. Perfect. All right. Uh, now, real quick, uh, here is a message from the hockey writers. 
Interested in writing for the Hockey Raiders? If you have experience writing about hockey, are passionate about the sport, and are looking to take your writing to the next level, the Hockey Raiders could be the place for you. Here at THW, you will have the opportunity to hone your craft at one of the world's largest and most respected hockey publishers. You will have control over what you write, be able to seek out media credentials, and be supported by a large network of writers and editors. Plus, you'll get paid for doing it. If you're interested and want to know more about team openings and requirements, please visit the Write for THW page on the Hockey Raiders website. A link to that page is also listed in the description we are back and let's dive right down into the you know the free agent signings that have gone down over the past couple of days a lot of big players off the board and there's a few big fish still left on the market so let's uh let's dive right into it uh ryan o'reilly to nashville positive negative what do you think fantasy wise that he does Definitely worth picking up this season. He's going to have a great opportunity with both Matt Duchesne and Ryan Johansson shipped out. Um, in terms of what Nashville is doing, I have no idea. Uh, but Weird. Ryan O'Reilly is going to be in a great opportunity to succeed. And I do think that he will be um, probably back up in his production a little bit. Obviously, last year he had a terrible year offensively with the Blues before he shipped to Toronto. Um, I do not expect that to happen again. Pick him up. Don't let him keep sliding. So would you pick him up mid rounds or more late rounds? Do you take a flyer on him or do you actually like take him, take him? I, w- I would take him, take him. I would probably like yeah. seventh, eighth round, ninth round. Um, okay. Obviously depending on how many players you have in your league, but um, right around that middle of the middle of the pack. Yeah. He's, he's never really been like that big offensive charge. He's always been more of the, you know, residual block shots, win face-offs type players. So if your league values that, I think he still has plenty of value there. But offensively, I think you're right. He'll go back up. I'm not sure if he goes back up to his, you know, high end as far as his offensive production goes, but I think he'll be definitely up from this year. So I'll agree with you on that. Let's do uh, Tyler Bertuzzi to Toronto. Absolutely pick him up in a higher round than you would think. He's going to be playing with Matthews and Marner more than likely. Um, it could be Yaron Croak up in the top spot or Max Domi, um, as we're hearing that he's signing a contract. Um, but if he's not with Matthews and Marner, he's going to be with Tavares Nylander, assuming all four of them are still in Toronto next year by the beginning of the season. Um, but at this point, like it's a no-brainer to take him. Like I said, he's most likely on that top line with Matthews Marner, and he's going to just rack up a ton of points. He's going to – like. If he stays healthy, he's a lock for 65, 70 points. Throws heads too, which is nice. Yeah, very, very good fantasy pickup. He's like everything that we all that we both love about Brady Kachuk. He's yeah. That. Yeah. At Bertuzzi, as a fantasy owner, I want Bertuzzi. As a Sabres fan, I never want to hear his name. <laughs> but that's just me personally. <laughs> Uh, let's go down to the next one. Let's do, uh, Evan Rodriguez to Florida. Yeah. I like the signing. He's going to be, he's not going to be like groundbreaking offensively or anything, um, uh, but he's going to be in a good position and Florida has a lot of good, um, good offensive pieces that he might end up playing with. So he he's in a good position to succeed for what his role typically is. Uh, he's coming off a really good year in, um, Colorado. And so I do think that, I do think that there's there's hope for him to to have a good year. Yeah, I like Rodriguez. He's always been kind of an under the radar player ever since he left Buffalo, but he's always been, you know, fairly consistent with the offensive production. And he he's great at filling in for when star players are out. And then you're like, wow, he actually he, he is pretty good. You're, wow. Yeah. So he's a bit of a sneaky pick. He's not a you know top four rounds type of player, but He's a round 10, 11, 12 type of player where you can, you know, maybe pick up some playmaking, a little bit of goal scoring. You're not going to get a lot of physicality out of him, but you'll yeah. get some you'll get some good offensive numbers. Let's do Zucker to Arizona. Again, don't understand this. I don't understand why Arizona is buying and especially like they give him a pretty good contract. Yes, he had yeah. 27 goals last year. Um, but like I said, um, somebody needs to score goals on the bad teams. Zucker is going to probably have a, at least 25 goals this year, um, probably 60 points. He's more than likely going to have an opportunity to play with Clayton Keller. Um, I hope Clayton Keller. I have no so, doubt about that. 
definitely going to be like at the top of the lineup for sure. And so he like he's going to be a, a lock for 60 points probably, if not more. He's normally that good kind of pick up and drop streaky player throughout the year. He's never really, you know, consistently scoring. He's that player where you're like, wow, he's doing really good this week. Got to pick him up. And the next week you're like, okay, he had one point. So yeah. he's streaky, but you know, the, he's still worth a, kind of a later round pick. If you ask me Yeah, uh, slightly bigger name, uh, Matt Duchesne going to Dallas definitely pick him up as early as you feel comfortable um like probably like round six seven eight going to um dallas at three million dollars he's going to want a bigger contract next contract next year sorry uh and he's going to be in that second line center position he's going to have some good wingers to play with dallas has some really underrated forwards um that can produce and some of them are centers like rupe hints he's fantastic um, and he's probably not going to get a chance to play with Jason Robertson, but um, no, the hints like line you, is not going to change. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, but you do have like some of these young and up and coming guys, like Wyatt Johnson, you might get a shot with, um, or if Johnston uh, would be fun. You're right. That'd yeah, be a lot of fun. Or even Ty Delandria, like he started to break out at the end of the last year. Um, so who knows what what Duchesne's position is going to look like and who's going to be um, who's going to be on his wings. But either way, he's like he's poised. It's we're less than we're just a year off of a 40, 43 goal season from Duchesne. Yeah, he had over eighty points, uh, not last year, but the year before. Yeah, he's he's gonna have a big year in Dallas. I, I I'm wholeheartedly agreeing with you on the Duchesne thing. I I think it was very strange to hear that he got, you know, basically tossed out in Asheville for basically nothing. Seemed yeah. like he was doing well there. It was just a bit of a down year, but hey, Dallas is going to reap the reward from that, and they're going to have a great time with it. Um, an interesting one for me, uh, and I'm a bit excited just as a a, a past 2013 draft fan. Uh, Jonathan <laughs> Drew going to the Avs. Are you as interested in this one as I am, or <laughs> uh, I'm a Nova Scotian, so absolutely. But you get um, it. Okay. <laughs> go, go moose heads. Um, I really want to see Drew Ann, McKinnon, and Rantanen on the same line. That would be Landis Cog such still a out, point. so I don't see why not. I know Landis Cog will be out. Um, and I do think that it's entirely possible that he does start the year with McKinnon and maybe they rekindle some of that love from Halifax and maybe not a hundred points each, but <laughs> maybe like sixty or seventy out of Drew Ann. Who knows? And the biggest thing is staying healthy. Now, Drew Ann has also had some um, time in the player's assistance program. He's been open about anxiety. So it's kind of a toss up about what he like, how consistent he can play next year. Um, but you have to bank on him being healthy. That's that's always the goal. He doesn't have any like it's not like Mark Stone where he's had back surgeries and everything. And you never know one day it could just be the end. He's just had a lot of like just minor injuries that keep stacking up. Um, but like he is poised for one of the biggest years out of all these people we have on our list to talk about. He yeah. and at league men, like yeah, he's and I know that doesn't really matter. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a great bargain contract. I'm excited to watch it happen. <laughs> yeah, he outside of entry level contracts, I think that he might finish the year with the most points per dollar. I, I'm gonna agree with you. He's 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 worth. Definitely a flyer if you don't have confidence in him, but if you believe in him like the two of us do, he's worth probably one of your like ninth or tenth round picks type player. Yeah. And honestly, maybe even higher than that, but you can probably get him in that ninth, tenth round. That's if you like, really believe in him, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it, there's a lot of potential with Drew in in Colorado. Oh, yeah. Um, we can go on forever, so we'll we'll jump to the next one. Orlov to Carolina. I love this. I think Carolina is doing everything right. Um, obviously, the, the cap hit is way higher than anybody thought it would be. But That's because we did Boston last year. <laughs> well, exactly. Um, and cap hit doesn't matter in fantasy. Take him um, fairly high. Like, fifth round, he, sh- he probably won't be there in the fifth round. 
Um, he's going to have a huge year. Um, Carolina needs some scoring. They um, they might rely on him. Now, it's interesting because they already have Brent Burns. They are rumored to be one of the favorites for Eric Carlson now. So there's only so much offense that can run through the back end. But even still, like he's not purely an offensive guy, but he moves the puck so well. He's going to get those blocks. He's going to get the takeaways. He's going to get some hits. Um, he he is a very well-rounded defenseman that you should absolutely want on your team. I'm gonna, I'm just going to shortly agree with you on that because I want to touch on your Carlson comment real quick. If Carolina doesn't learn from San Jose's mistake of putting <laughs> both Carlson and Burns on the same team and realizing that they're both not going to do anything <laughs> productive, I don't. I don't know what else to tell them, but they should. If they're going to take Carlson, you got to move Burns out because you can't put both in the same place. Yeah. Didn't work the first time, won't work this time. I, I don't recommend it. Um, let's talk about a goalie real quick. Let's talk Corpus Allo to the Sens. Yeah, so this is my team. I, I love it. The Senators are poised for a huge season, um, pushing for the playoffs and kind of in the same spot as the Sabres, so – like, are you a little bit jealous that Ottawa got their got their starting goalie? Uh, no, we have Devin Levi, so I'm still a pretty happy man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, he's he should have a big year. He's gonna get the majority of the wins. Um, who knows how Anton Forsberg is? Um, he doesn't have any knees right now, and Mad Sogard is only 22. So Corpus Allo is gonna get the majority of the wins for Ottawa this year. Depending on how many that is, might be 35, might be 45. Who knows? Um, but and I, I expect he's going to have good numbers. He's not, he's not an elite goalie. Um, he's at the high end of that mid tier of goaltenders. He's a starter. Um, he, he's absolutely a starter. He's at that high end of mid tier goalies. Um, and he could prove to be an elite goalie this year, kind of like Linus Olmark. Um, just kind of have that big breakout year. I don't expect him to win the Vezina next year, but if or he have can a put one up, point whatever goals against, holy. Yeah, if he can put up like a a nine thirteen and a two point three goals against average, that like that'll be a great year, and it's absolutely doable. Do you think he outperforms uh, Talbot, who went to the uh, Kings, I believe? Absolutely, Talbot is washed, and like, okay. yeah, I don't think Talbot's gonna have a good year in LA at all, and they're gonna regret that signing, even though it's only one million. I think they're gonna regret having him as their goaltending option. He let he left Ottawa out to dry so many times last year. So you say take Corpus Allo over Talbot if you're choosing between the two? Yes. Do not take Talbot at all. <laughs> uh, let's hop back to uh, some defensemen. Let's do uh, Shane Gosper, who went to the Red Wings. I don't understand this one either. They don't need another – I mean, he's probably the best – UFA signing defenseman that they've done after Sherratt and then Justin Hall, but he was the last one that they did and they don't need him. Like they have Oli Mata, they have uh, Jake Wallman, and then obviously Sherratt and um, Hall. Cider. Cider, of course. Um, Edmondson. Yeah. Like, I don't know what they're doing. I Like, I don't get it, uh, but. He's better than Justin Hall. That's yeah, my opinion, but. Absolutely. I don't know where he's going to fit into the lineup. Um, probably on the second pair behind Maurice Sider. Um, I'm with Wallman. Yeah, if, if him and Jake Wallman, if they play well together, and he can have that offense because he had a great year last year between Philly and yeah. Carolina. If he can do that again, he's absolutely worth picking up in the. Again, I think everybody we talk about is like a tenth round pick, but if you can get him in that kind of mid range, then he's absolutely worth it. I'd say he'd go a little bit higher, maybe sixth, seventh round, just for the sake of his offensive production alone. He always gets the points. Even when he was on bad teams, he's always putting up points. So I think he's a worthy fantasy pickup in the high mid rounds as opposed to the low mids. That's yeah, that. that's fair. Uh, let's do uh, Klingberg to the Leafs. I don't, I don't know how to feel about it yet. I don't. I mean, I, I guess I'm looking at it as a did it make sense to sign him to that much money for one year with the cap situation they're going through? But fantasy wise, as long as he's not on the ice with Morgan Riley, then he should be fine. 
if he's on the ice with Morgan Riley, the puck's going to be in the net 10 times out of 10, <laughs> like in their own net because neither of them play defense. Um, well, it could be in the other net. They both score a bunch. That's true. Whoever gets first possession is getting the goal. Um, but no, I, I do think that's that, what you uh, like out of fantasy. You like good fantasy. You like big scoring defense. I do. I, I like scoring defensemen a lot. Yeah, I do. I do as well. And um, is Klingberg worth taking that risk um, for like, again, his plus minus and his lack of hits and lack, like all he is is points, not the kind of defenseman I like to take. But if you can get him in the late rounds, absolutely. Like he, he is worth a fantasy pick. Don't let him just sit in free agency. But I, I do like it. And obviously there's a ton of offense in Toronto. They scored one of the most, like the highest amounts of goals last year in the NHL. Um, and there's like, there's no reason that it's not going to work. It depends on who his partner is, how well it works. But there's no reason to think that um, he's not going to work out in Toronto and be that offensive piece. He's going to be on the second power play unit. Um, so yeah, definitely worth picking up wherever you feel comfortable taking that kind of player. Again, I don't, so we would be in the later end, but for me, he would be kind of in that same realm as Gasper. And especially since he on, he's on a offensively charged team like Toronto, I'd yeah. value those points over his defensive liabilities because it, to me, it kind of balances it out. Um, especially if you're in a more offensively charged league, he's somebody you might want to take as opposed to if you get punished for defensive mistakes, then you're going to really want to avoid somebody yeah. like Klingberg just because you, you got to find that balance based off of how your league is run. So you really got to look at those numbers and kind of weigh your options that way uh, yep. for a player like him. Uh, one more, uh, and then we'll jump to the last part. Uh, Connor Clifton to Buffalo. I'll let you talk about this one. Me, I like it as just an overall signing, but fantasy wise, he had an average year uh, for fantasy. He was kind of in that mid tier of defenders, but he's good for depth. He throws hits, he can block shots. I think on a team like Buffalo, again, another offensively charged team, he might get a couple of extra points, especially if he ends up playing second pair with power. He might get some, you know, secondary assists to go along with some of those breakout passes or something. He's not a power play specialist by any means, but he's somebody that if you're in a categories league, take him for the residual, you know, defensive abilities, not necessarily for anything offensive he's going to do. He's probably going to be a more pickup drop waiver wire type of player more than anything, but I don't think he's completely useless fantasy wise as an actual player on the ice. Fantastic. Fantasy wise, he's a little bit of that fringe type player to me. Yeah, if you have room for him, pick him up. If not, whatever. Nice and simple. Uh, yeah. Before we wrap up, let's uh, let's talk about the big fish that are still left. Uh, Patrick Kane, where do you think he goes? What do you think his point totals are looking like for the year? He's going to miss a significant amount of time at the beginning of the year. I'm going to say he ends up in Dallas on a cheap deal. Um, and it's so hard to pretend. I'll, I'll say a 60, We're spitballing here. We're just having fun now. <laughs> I'll, I'll say a 67-point pace. I don't know how many okay. games he's going to play, though. Say, say, he put, say he scores – or say he's at plays 40 games. What do you think his point total 40 is? 40 games, I'm going, to say, I'm going to say 29 points. 29? I was going to say 32, so we're, we're close with the guess. Yeah. Uh, Tarasenko, he's still on there's, the board. There's word that if Ottawa can move to bring cap, then Tarasenko's headed to Ottawa. They've had that some conversations with him already. That would be amazing. He would get the chance. I don't know. That would be wonderful for you guys. Absolutely. And it, it, it's tough because you don't want to take Brady Kachuk off that line, but Kachuk and Norris played so well together um, mm -hmm. here before. And you but, guys will have Norris back from injury this year, which will be nice for you. Exactly. And you don't want Tarasenko and Norris because they're both 30, 35 gold guys. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if Tarasenko ends up in Ottawa, which I don't know if that's my official prediction, but that's kind of what the rumblings are saying right now. Um, because it's all dependent on, again, to bring Cat. Um, but I do think that he can be a, I'll say, 28 goals, 64 points. Okay. See, 
I'll, I'll follow your your rumor rumble of let's say he goes to Ottawa for the sake of the for the sake of the argument. I think playing up top with somebody like Stutzla, I bet you he hits that forty goal mark. I bet yeah, you he drops awesome. forty and then maybe thirty assists and he hits seventy points. Because I I really think he still has that in him to really be that big goal scorer for them. And Kachuk will give him room. Stutzla will hit him with everything he can and then still be enough of a distraction since he's a goal scorer himself. So I, I think he can hit that 40 goal mark. Here's to hoping you're right. I sure hope I'm not right. <laughs> you stay away from <laughs> our playoff spot. <laughs> uh, uh, let's do Matt Dumba. I, I have no idea. I like it. I haven't seen his name on Twitter over the last two days once. Like, I'm surprised that Minnesota just doesn't want to hold on to him there. Well, and it's tough because unless he's going to sign really cheap, they can't because they have over $14 million tied up in the Suter and Parise still. Um, but well, like, I don't know exactly how much cap room they have and what the roster looks like right now off the top of my head. But I don't know. I, I think – uh, right now, Noah Hannafin is the is linked to Florida. He's kind of the front run, runner there. I think Matt Dumba ends up in Florida instead of Hannafin. Um, that's, they okay. still have to clear a little bit of cap space. Um, they moved to Claire already, which we talked about. Um, but I do think Dumba ends up in Florida. And 28-point guy. Depending on, you know, what he might want to do or where he's kind of at with his life, I wouldn't be super shocked to see a team like San Jose take a stab at him because they could use some assistance on, you know, the defensive end. And they, they have some cap space to work with, so they, they could definitely bring it to him. And if he if he plays in San Jose, especially if they ship out Carlson, he's going to get top end minutes. Yeah. So I think he can put up that 35 point mark. He's normally a bit more physical than he is points. So, yeah. uh, you know, always be wary of good players on bad teams, but I think he has enough left in him to be worth picking up. Uh, two more. Let's do Josh Bailey. Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Okay. No Perhaps the points. What do you think? I don't know. I just think he's a, he's a good third line winger. Like he's not going to be yeah. fantastic or anything. He's got, he's got good finishing. That's, that's about it. He doesn't generate a lot of offense, doesn't play a lot of defense, but he's just like kind of there. I think he could sign for like 1.75 for a one year deal um, and could be exactly what Winnipeg needs. Now we already talked about how they kind of have that culture of poor, poor defensive forward, but I Fallon might make that up and maybe they play on a line together and, kind of balance each other out who knows um but i do think that he's still good for i don't even know what he finished last year with for points but if he's on winnipeg playing with let's say adam lowry and alex i fallow it's like 32 okay i I was thinking more of a team like washington just because they they definitely have some roster spots they can fill out and players like oshi and backstrom are constantly getting hurt and cycled out um, Kuznetsov might get traded out too. I've seen a bunch of times, so they could definitely use a forward like him to just kind of fill out that middle six. Yeah. And I think he would fit well in their scheme. Um, so my guess would be Washington and uh, around that 40 point spot, just for the sake of, I think he has enough in him offensively to maybe drop a 2020 season. Like 20 goals. Uh, last one, less of an offensive charge player, but still, in my opinion, fantasy worthy. Zach Cassian. <laughs> um, I don't think he gets another job. You don't think so? No. If I had to guess, how old is he now? I have to look 30, this up. Uh, he was 2009 draft, so he'd be 32. 32, yeah. I don't know. It's tough because he finished last year with, what was it, two goals in 53 games. Mm-hmm. That was it. Um, He's never been known for his goal scoring. He's all about physicality. He throws hits, and he plays on that fourth-line role as an agitator. He'll rack up penalty minutes, and he racks up hits. And depending on your league, it's worth something. I would say Toronto if they didn't sign Ryan Reeves. But they have Reeves, so let's... You stumped me. I don't know. 
Who are you I know. Thinking? I had to come up with a curveball for you. The rest of them were too easy. Who are you thinking? Um, my initial thought before free agency started was maybe Buffalo, just because they could use some grit. Uh, but that was a that's just a pipe dream of him returning there, and I'm not sure Kevin Adams would want somebody um, with his like attitude history in the locker room. Um, yeah. But you know, just me as a liking physicality would be fun. Uh, I still think he would do well out west, uh, maybe on a team uh, like Nashville, who's again doing weird stuff with the roster. He might be just that kind of distraction type player uh, while they're maybe trying to develop the the younger players and bring them up, uh, keep them away. So I think Nashville would be a, a fun spot for him. I don't think he drops a whole lot of points, maybe 10 points max if he plays all 82. And that's assuming that they keep him in the lineup for all 82. Uh, but uh, that that would be me. That's That's what I would go with. I'll throw two names out there. All right. Columbus and Montreal. Okay. Columbus. Neither of them are looking to take huge steps. Both teams are going to have a lot of young guys. Somebody needs to stick up for those young guys. I think Cassian could fit in well and kind of, even if he is a healthy scratch, just kind of be like the team dad. Like, yeah. Just, I don't know. I, th- I feel like he fits really well with those younger teams and drop him well, like, Yeah, exactly. So that, that'll be my guess. And, I'll say he'll he'll one up last year and get three points. Three, three points. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, that's that's about all we have for today. Uh, so thank you everybody for tuning in to this week's episode of Fantasy Four Check. Um, for next show, we're going to be talking about which goalies you should be targeting for next season. Top end of your draft, deeper portions of them. We'll kind of go through who you should be really be looking at who you might want to stray away, uh, stray away from, and we'll kind of go through that whole shebang there. Uh, don't forget to the, to subscribe to the podcast on your preferred listening channel and to the Hockey Writers Podcast and YouTube pages where you can find anything and everything hockey-related. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Stro67. And me on Twitter at JacobBillingT10. Uh, Feel free to drop us a like, and we will keep you up to date on all things fantasy throughout the year. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.